Good evening, Bante and all Kaliana Nita, Suki Hotu. I'm Aliana, your moderator tonight. Welcome to Suta Discussion Day 13 by Bante Dr. Ganggodawila Chandima. Very happy and excited that tonight Bante will be elaborating new topic, which is Ratana Suta, the second Suta from the total of 10 Suta that has been chosen by Bante Chandima for this Suta discussion. Therefore, for those who wish to join the discussion via Zoom class, where we can engage directly with Bante, kindly contact us on Piratana Wihara Aman Perdana Clan's Facebook Messenger. You are most welcome to join us. However, this class also will be broadcast on Piratana Wihara Aman Perdana Clan Facebook page and YouTube channel. Our speaker, Bante Dr. Gangola Chandima, currently is a senior advisor at Patisota Canada, a virtual Dharma organization that help beginner as well as expert student in learning Dharma in variety ways. Many people are interested in Dharma Pariyasana, Patisota most acclaimed interview series, which Bante conduct on a regular basis. You can check on Patisota with the link www.patisota.blogspot.com. Bante Chandima earned a PhD in Buddhist studies in 2015 from University of Sri Jayawardene Pudepura in Sri Lanka. From 2012 to 2015, Bante served as Theravada Buddhist chaplain at the University of British Columbia, Vancouver, Canada. And in 2016, Bante was a research fellow at the Center of Studies in Religion and Society of the University of Victoria, British Columbia, Canada. Without further ado, we welcome once again Bante and thank you very much for the talk. Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. Uh, good evening, everybody. Good evening, Bante. Uh, good evening, Bante. Yeah, so we have uh, participants from uh, our usual group. Aliana, Lim, Kim, uh, Kenny, Seta, Connie, I don't know whether I it's pronounced properly. Vinita, I think a uh, couple of uh, others might uh, join uh, as time goes by. So today uh, we are going to be starting a new sutta. So this is uh, not a very uh, new sutta to many of you, many of us. It's uh, none other than uh, Ratana Sutta. Now, Ratana Sutta is very uh, famous. Uh, probably, if I ask you a question about uh, what suttas have you learned uh, uh, since uh, you started your journey as a Buddhist, uh, I think this is one of the suttas that you uh, learn uh, way before you uh, uh, got in touch with other bunch of suttas, right? Because whenever you go to a temple, uh, this is one of the very, uh, I would say, uh, uh, used uh, suttas by uh, monks. So among the suttas, Mangala Sutta, Pratana Sutta, and Metta Sutta. So we actually go in the same process, I would say the regular process, Mangala Sutta, Ratana Sutta, and then uh, uh, Metta Sutta. So as you can see in the PDF, which I uh, got Aliana to send you uh, into the, the group. You can see there are 17 stanzas in this sutta. So I was thinking to like uh, conduct a discussion in a way where you may have some interest about what you're going to learn. Now in Mangala Sutta, it's pretty interesting, right? So there are 38 blessings, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, so and so forth. But in this sutta, there is no such uh, gradual uh, dhamma component. So what we're going to learn is that uh, uh, we're going to learn what may have happened uh, for this sutta to uh, be uh, taught by the Buddha. And then the, the, the three uh, jewels, I would say, Buddha, Dhamma, Sangha, and how they uh, were given. So. Uh, I hope that uh, this is not going to be boring because you need to understand that what uh, the Latin Sutta is actually all about. 
in terms of uh, uh, three jewels buddha dhamma sangha the buddha and his teachings and the sangha so uh, my plan is to uh, cover i would say uh, you know uh, discuss uh, probably one to two stanzas each day but today i plan to discuss the background story of Brother Nasrutta a little bit and then to talk about the first two stanzas and then uh, as we uh, discuss uh, we're going to be uh, picking out uh, two stanzas probably one stanza or two stanzas for each, for each uh, Friday that's the plan hello Hemahi how are you doing <laughs> good evening Pante thank you yeah, for being here evening. thank you sorry for being late huh? sorry sorry not, not at all you came yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. So before we start off today's Dhamma uh, thing, uh, Dhamma discussion, the new brand new Sutta, let's pay homage to Buddha. Sadhu, 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 Namo Tassa, Bhagavato, Arahato, Samma, Sambhudasya, Namo Tassa, Bhagavato, Arahato, Samma, Okay. So, I mean, before I uh, start off uh, this brand new Sutta, Ratan Sutta uh, discussion, I wanted to know what uh, you already, uh, you know, know about this sutta. What are your thoughts? I mean, what kind of a uh, an impression or knowledge uh, that you have about this sutta in your own way? Uh, yeah, so let me uh, let me raise the question from anybody of you. Yeah, what do you know about Ratana Sutta? Probably we can navigate uh, our discussion uh, uh, through those uh, comments, remarks that you may have. Uh, Bante, can I say something? Yeah. Bante, uh, yeah, this is a, to me, is a powerful sutta to chant. And I noticed during the COVID time and when the temple TRV conducted the, the, the chanting session during the COVID, I found it is so powerful to protections. Uh, to me, it's more for a bit any negative forces and all that i uh, that's what the i felt that the the ex, uh, the story of buddha in the village you know those days he went there and with this powerful of triple gem chanting he managed to clear most of the uh, issues at that time so i found uh, during this covid last two years i follow Bante Sadat closely in the chanting is so powerful and I find uh, well a lot of uh, I mean prevented so far two years and a half uh, any seriousness in COVID cases in my company as well in the fed, uh, in the family I found I'm very connected to this sutta and has been very good serving uh, me to be connected uh, a powerful a powerful sutta to chant. That's from my side. Bante, I, I really like this sutta. Thank you. Great. Who else? Who's there to uh, share with us some of the insights about uh, Ratana Sutta? Kim, how are you? Are you getting better? You gotta unmute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I'm all good now. Any thoughts about Ratana Sutta? Your impressions? Uh, uh, honestly, I'm I'm actually quite new to all this. Quite new sutta. to the sutta, so yeah. Because uh, when I first went into this uh, Ratana temple, uh, I I'm not sure if you know Yuchu, you, Mrs. Yu, Yuchu. Do you know her? Uh, she actually brought me there when I I uh, started to know about all this uh, dharma i used to go to a temple further from my place 
So she was the one who actually introduced me to Tiratana in Amman Padana. So I, when I started going there, three months later, COVID happened. So I actually didn't get to know a lot about all these dhammas, but I only hear through YouTube. Mm-hmm. So I've been, I like to listen to dharma talks. So I always on the YouTube to get better understanding because to me, it was like, what is dharma? What is, you know? So, but I slowly, slowly got got myself involved and I, I just love to listen to Dharma talks. So when all these classes came on board, I thought maybe it's a good opportunity for me to understand deeper into what all this is about, the Dharma, the Sangha, you know, the, the, the three triple gems. Uh, I honestly am quite new to all this, but I'm learning, I'm, I'm, I'm learning. I'm trying my best to, to know what is Buddhism because I'm a Buddhist. I don't know what actually is Buddhism until of late. So, and when I hear people going to all these pilgrimage trips and all, I, I really like to one day visit the Bodh Gaya and then to see the, the Buddha's birthplace and all that. I'm, I'm waiting for a trip to be organized a pilgrimage trip and I would love to go there. Great. Yeah. Yeah. So anybody else? What does Ratana Sutta mean to you? I mean, uh, with your experiences of learning, knowledge? Bhante, mm-hmm. can I ask you a question? Huh? The Buddha teaches to chant. He teaches to chant suttas and paritas. So this ratana, I, I want to find out uh, what is the difference between the suttas and the paritas. Uh? Yeah. The one we are starting now is parita or sutta? This, no, uh, we, no, parita is a, is a term that was added uh, uh, kind of kind of a later on uh, application to the to a selection of suttas, especially uh, the book called uh, Chatubhana Vara Pali, where you see the Chanti book, which was started uh, in uh, in the era of Anuradhapura in Sri Lanka, where you see the bunch of suttas as a collection. And 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 that collection is called Parittas, Paritta. So here in the sutta, we don't see that this is uh, being considered as a Paritta, but the, the idea of the sutta is paritta because paritta means safety, right? Safety. Okay. So the idea is paritta, but we don't take it as a paritta as we study because it's a sutta, it's, it's, it's another sutta, right? So uh, if you look at the meaning of the sutta, the idea of the sutta, that is paritta. But the idea that it was given to bunch of suttas like Ratana, Metta, Mangala, Kasibara, Dwaja, Atanati, and the traditions of chanting that came a little late because uh, uh, not everybody understood the philosophical meaning of the Dharma so they needed some protection I mean if you if you go to a temple I, I mean out of uh, te- I, I would say 10 out of uh, 9 out of 10 uh, come to secular pursuits I mean may, may my examination my safety my health I mean, not, not many people wanted to jump to the philosophical pursuit. So the paritta was kind of a, an, 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 an idea uh, that was actually uh, added uh, uh, in the era of Anuradhapur in Sri Lanka, I would say 180. So, um, yeah, so Ratana, we don't take Ratana Sutta as a paritta in the first place when we study, but you see Ratana Sutta mostly in a Paritta book, chanting book. But this yeah. is why I want to start off now saying that Ratana Sutta is mentioned two times in the canon. One is Sutta Nipata uh, 2.1. This is one place where you see Ratana Sutta. Another ref- uh, citation or another place where you see Ratana Sutta is in the Kuddaka Pata. It's, it's another book in the Kuddaka Nikaya. Now we see Diga, Majima, Sangita, Angutra, Kuddaka, right? So under Kuddaka Nikaya, there are two books, 
uh, there are 15 books actually even this number varies from country to country thailand has a different number sri lanka has a different number uh, burma has a different number and set of books so uh, two books in the kuddaka nikaya called sutanipata and kuddaka pata they both mention ratana sutta now now you may you may see something here about repetitions now in in the canon there are so many repetitions the same sutta has been mentioned in many other places so uh, that's why we have to filter out when we understand it anyways uh now my friend uh, we don't take it as a part in the first place but in the second place yes it is we take it so i mean as because we study not from a contemporary perspective at the moment we study from the early Buddhist perspective. So it is a sutta. It's just any other sutta. Okay. So Ratana, what does Ratana mean? Jewel. A jewel, Bhante. A jewel or gem, right? Yeah. Gem. Gem. Jewel. Yes. Yeah, jewel or gem. So now this is actually connected to uh, Tisarana practice. You know, like when I when 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 a monk uh, uh, gives you the precepts, normally the monks uh, or nuns they give you uh, tisarana at the beginning, right? Uh, right. T what is tisarana? Buddhang sarana gachami, Brahman sangham sarana gachami. So I go to the Buddha uh, for refuge, and then uh, tutiyampi secondly, tatiyampi. Uh, Right, so we go to Buddha Dhamma Sangha uh, for refuge three times. Uh, so, Buddha Dhamma Sangha, this set of three, uh, has been taken as a, uh, as a what you call as Tiratana, called Ratana, uh, which you call by uh, gems. So, now, how? I mean, what was the what was the background story to this Ratana Sutta? It's very interesting to learn. When we learn the background story uh, to this uh, Ratana Sutta, we find out uh, uh, an interesting story behind. The interesting story comes from uh, uh, a very difficult time that uh, was faced by uh, a city called Vesali. The city called Vesali uh, encountered a very terrible uh, issue at a certain point. But quite interestingly, Vesali was uh, governed by a very diplomatic, no, sorry, democratic uh, set of people. We call them Lichavins. Actually, uh, this is the only uh, uh, democratic uh, state uh, in India, in then India, actually. So there were 16, uh, uh, I would say, states. Uh, this is the only democratic state the rest of the 15 uh, uh, they were actually uh, republican states governed by uh, individual kings so how did such a state was plagued by different issues that's the question actually when you study buddhism especially the polit political thought in buddhist teachings what are the teachings for countries uh, uh, government what are the what are the uh, teachings that you can learn about politics in buddhism it's not about this dirty corrupted politics that we see in the world today what can we learn uh, about uh, politics in buddhism we always start from the lichavins people who govern this uh, city and the suburbs uh, so it is said that lichavins those who govern the city called Vesali, was the first kind of people who practice democracy in the Buddhist history. Isn't it interesting? That's pretty interesting because they uh, co-ruled the state. That means there were 7,707 princely uh, rulers who came together, who, who ruled together. So there was not one, one particular king. 7,707 princely rulers uh, ruled the country, sorry, I would say the state. Uh, and it is said that uh, in this state, there were seven, all 7,707 right? palaces, 
forts, pleasure parks, lotus ponds. Uh, we learn from uh, Vinay Pitaka, uh, Chivara Kandaka uh, reference. So it's always 7,707 rulers. They co rule democratically the state. Now, where is it um, uh, located at the moment? I mean, it is what we call by Bihar. Modern Bihar is the place where we understand Vesali, the state of uh, uh, what you call, actually, the state is Vajji, Vajji state. Uh, the Vesali is the city in the Vajji. Now we know uh, the, the four Republican states at the time of the Buddha, uh, Magadh, Avanti, Kosala, and Vatsa. They are the main Republican states at the time of the Buddha. Uh, so Magadh uh, was ruled by uh, Bimbisara, King Bimbisara, which we understand by uh, Gaya and Patna at the moment. These are the modern locations for that. And Avanti was ruled by the king uh, Pajyota, Pradyota, which we understand by Madhya Pradesh at this moment. And the Kosala, one of the very famous states, uh, was ruled by uh, Prasenaji, that means King Kosala, which is identified as uh, uh, Eastern Uttar Pradesh, which had two cities, Stravasti and Kushavati. And the last uh, main Republican state, uh, which is called by Vatsa, was ruled by Udayana, King Udayana, which is recognized as Allahabad at the moment. Now, these are actually main Republican state. So Wajji was not a very, uh, Wajji was not a big Republican state. It was a democratic, it was the first democratic state in India. Now what happened? After five years of the Buddha's enlightenment, which means that when he was, how old was he after five years of the enlightenment? Uh, in which age uh, was he able to enlighten? 29. 29? Huh? Really? He left 30, the house? 35. 35. 35. At the age of 35, 35. And Siddhartha, ascetic Siddhartha became the Buddha. So after five years means that when he was 40. So this is the time the Vesali, the city Vesali of uh, the Vajji state had a problem. The problem was there was a threefold calamity that uh, uh, plague in the city and how it happened was very interesting. There was a famine and drought came up and the, and the very poor people, they could actually, uh, uh, you know, uh, encountered with this famine and drought. And then what happened, uh, their bodies were cast away in the city uh, to eat the corpses, uh, those dead bodies, there were evil spirits actually entered the city. So now there are evil spirits and then the uh, famine, two issues have uh, arisen at that point. And then what happened, there was a very uh, bad uh, pestilence, I would say a plague broke out, disease. So many people, they uh, uh, were vulnerable to this disease. So now there are three uh, calamities uh, that we can see at the uh, city of uh, Vesali, which means number one is famine, number two is evil spirits, number three is uh, pestilence or uh, I would say uh, uh, disease, uh, endemic disease. Okay, great. So now uh, what happened was uh, the Buddha, where, what do you think where the Buddha was living at this point? Anybody wants to guess five years after the Buddha's enlightenment? Any guess? Any wild guess or educated guess? <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Without further ado, the Buddha was living in the state under home. the tree. Under the, <laughs> yeah, he was under the tree always, <laughs> most of the time. I'm asking the exact location where the Buddha was living. Rajagaha. Rajagaha is the uh, what you call uh, the, the capital city of Magadha, that we understand by uh, Gaya and Patna area at that point. Now, let me tell you what happened. Now, when Vesali was hit by these three issues, famine, uh, what, what, what does famine mean? Famine, no food, right? At the same time, there was a drought, no water. So, no food, no water. And then what happened? The poor people, they were hit 
hardly and they uh, they started to die and the evil spirits came to eat out uh, those deadly bodies and then there was a uh, plague broke out that was how the individual uh, events happened now at that time people believed in uh, vesali which was the city of city of vesali but the vajian uh, people this issue came up as a reason of the unrighteousness of the king now let's say the the prince rulers 7707 prince rulers and the prince rulers were very democratic they said okay you can investigate investigate us and we are very uh, open for that and then uh, they found out there is nothing wrong with um, these rulers prince rulers and then somebody suggested why don't we uh, do blessings to the gods the deities uh, different powerful uh, devas at that time so they started praying for them but nothing nothing uh, i would say um, happened differently for the issue so then somebody suggested why don't we then approach the six teachers they were very renowned teachers uh, why don't we approach these six teachers just just by their arrival these uh, three fall calamities will i would say subsided and then what happened these teachers came to the city of mesali purna kasapa makkali gosada papuda kachchayana and ajita kesa kambala niganta nath putra and papuda kachchayana but nothing was changed just because they came they did whatever their blessings <laughs> but nothing was changed and then somebody a uh, group of people were talking why don't we invite the buddha where is the buddha now oh they found out oh he is in rajaga the king has invited him to be there for the vassa so maybe we send two ministers mahali and another uh, advisor of uh, lichavin state to invite the buddha but we cannot approach the buddha because he is there because the king invited him so we have to approach the king first let's send uh, two ministers uh, to the king with some army and uh, they approach uh, the king the king was uh, bimbisara king bimbisara said no i don't like to approve this idea and then uh, then they asked uh, can we approach the buddha and then uh, talk this uh, with the buddha directly he said okay and uh, go ahead and when they uh, talked to the buddha the buddha said okay i'm ready i would like to come and bless so uh, then what happened uh, the trip uh, was planned uh, by the buddha at the same time uh, king uh, bimsar so now what we know uh, i mean uh, depending on the distances that there were five leagues from uh, magadha to uh, the ganges so the ganges is between uh, uh, vesali and uh, magadha so five leagues uh, how can i put into the modern uh, stats i would say uh, uh, you can check that one so one league is equivalent to a uh, couple something but anyways so let's take from the buddhist uh, matrix so there were five leagues from uh, Uh, Magadha to Ganges, so where you see the Patna Patna area, and then another three leagues from Ganges to Vesali. So the king actually prepared the whole journey up to Ganges, but he can prepare the rest of the journey because it's a part of the uh, Vajins border. So they prepared uh, that area too. So, however, the Buddha with five uh, hundred monks managed to go to Vesali. Now. when uh, the gods i would say uh, king uh, of the god uh, saka god saka indra and other powerful gods came to know that the buddha is coming so they came early and uh, when the buddha went there the buddha asked uh, venerable ananda uh, bhante ananda can you recite ratana sutta by sprinkling holy water uh, all across the city he said yes so then buddha and other monks stayed uh, somewhere probably a city hall in a city hall and then the venerable uh, ananda started sprinkling water by reciting ratana sutta everywhere in the city where he found out uh, the evil spirits actually 
So um, the Buddha and uh, other monks waited uh, till Venerable Ananda came back. So he returned. And then Buddha gave another talk uh, by using the same Sutta Ratana Sutta. Commentaries say for the following five days also, uh, there was a uh, Dhamma talk given by the Buddha about Ratana Sutta. So this is how it happened. It is said that when the Buddha started uh, reciting, I mean, uh, I would say teaching uh, Venerable Anand, the Ratana Sutta, uh, at the beginning of the third stanza, Yang Ken Chivitang Idhavahuranga, all the evil spirits escaped from the city and all the dead bodies were disappeared. Right? Uh, so this is how we learn from the commentary. So uh, this is what we learn uh, as a background story uh, about, uh, you know, Ratana Sutta. So the most important thing is how do we understand Tiratana? I would say Buddha, Dhamma, Sangha, right? So Tiratana is a part of your temple's uh, name, right? <laughs> so it's interesting to learn what uh, they are exactly according to Ratana Sutta. So, um, with that in mind, let's get into the sutta, right? Uh, Ratana Sutta. See. Okay, so this sutta has 17 stanzas, as I said earlier. I would like somebody to recite the first stanza of Ratana Sutta. Who would like to uh, do this, uh, you know, effort? <laughs> Oh, Hema. Yeah, go ahead uh, for the first stanza. Yanita butani samagatani bumani wa yani wa antalike sabe wa buta sumana bawantu atobi sakacha sunantu basitam. Okay. Yani the butani. Samagatan. Now see, this is this is where we can actually learn the, the uh, letters. Ya ni the bhutani samagatani bhuma ni wa ya niva antalike sabbe bhuta sumena bhavantu atho pi sakkach. Sunantu Bhasita. See where we are uh, supposed to lend it and then how we need to uh, continue. So, what does this first tensa mean actually? It's pretty interesting. We had to learn some Pali uh, over here because it, without some Pali, you won't understand the real meaning. Now, actually, my plan with this Ratana Sutta today, because Mangala Sutta, you see individual 38 factors, to give you uh, a good understanding about some of the Pali words when you chant, when you listen to the chanting of uh, a monk or a nun or somebody, rather than just listening, Yani, the Bhutan, Samatani, so and so forth. So you can see uh, in the PDF all these uh, meanings actually one by one. Yani, Idh. Now there is a combination. We have to decombine the word. Yani, the Okay, before that, let's uh, see the translation as a whole. Whatever beings that are here assembled, whether terrestrial or celestial, may every being be happy and joyful and also listen attentively to my words. Now, this means there are many other uh, evil spirits still uh, roaming around at that point, right? So these evil spirits started to go away by the third stanza, Yang Ken Now let's find out uh, the uh, you know individual meanings of these words. Ya need in Pali for the euphony. What is euphony? For the easy articulation uh, in Pali, we combine words, right? So we don't need to uh, pronounce uh, two words, right? Ya ni either. Ya ni either. Right. Better say yani the so we decombine. So we sorry, we combine. Now, in order to understand the meaning, we have to decombine, separate. 
Yani either Yani means whatever. Idha means here. In Pali, we call idha means here. So we make it a combination. Yani the Bhutani. Bhutani means beings. That means the Bhutas are who are the Bhutas? Bhutas mean those who have not yet passed away, died, those who are still living. They are the Bhutas. But unfortunately, some people say Bhutas are those who passed away <laughs> and in uh, uh, living in uh, ghost forms. Huh? Right? So we all are Bhutas. Right? So what's the word for the dead people, some folks? If, if living beings are called as Bhutas, then what's the word for the dead people who passed away? Interesting, huh? Now, now we call like, you are a Buddha, I'm a Buddha. Then what do we call for a dead person? A Kaputa. <laughs> ah, what is that? Can you repeat again, please? I don't know. I just get no, it. I mean, I mean, I... Is it a Kaputa? Oh, how do you spell that? A? No. I'm trying. No. Is no, it a Pali no. word? I have no idea, actually. It's no word uh, suffix called Buddha to a dead person, actually. Now, it's very interesting. If we call a living being as a Buddha, even a dog, even us, any living being as Buddha, what do we call for a dead person when somebody passes away? How do we call that person in Pali? You all know the word, see, but you don't know how to take it out at this point. I mean, Umani. No, it's not here. <laughs> you won't be able to find it out here. It's not here. But is you know it. From, Bante, is that a word from Sabya Sankara Anita? No. No, there is a particular Pali word for the dead person. When somebody passes away, we call that dead person. This for the Pali term, actually. You know that uh, term, I know, but you don't understand uh, how to bring that word to this conversation. I know uh, human being. Sata, Bante. Sata. Sata is. Sata is a, every living being. Another word for Buddha. Manusia is living being. Manusia is a human. Human, yeah. like uh, in this bigger umbrella called Satta or Buddha, uh, Manusa is one of the particular genre oh. of, uh, you know, Satta or Buddha. I'm asking, let's talk about the dead people. Huh? So we're going to be dying one day, right? We were, we were dead in the past life too. What's the Pali word for the dead person? Marana. Marana. Marana is what's going to happen to us, death. <laughs> no, not... That's not the word for us when we are dead. Okay, it's taking time. Bumani. It's taking time. Peta. Bumani. Peta. Oh, Peta. Yeah. Uh, Peta. It's pretty interesting. Buddha, Peta. Buddha, Peta. It's interesting. Buddha becomes Peta. Peta becomes Buddha. Right? Okay, so now you understand. Whatever. The beings, Bhutani means being, Samagatani, uh, gathered, assembled. Samagata means who have come here, right? Got together. In the aspects of uh, two avenues, I would say two areas called Bhumani wa Antalike. Okay, to give you the precise idea about this Bhumani and Antalike, I wanted to explain something from the commentary. The commentary says something like this. So the Deva from Yama heaven until Akanita. Now, probably I'm going to show you this thing. So you will get a sort of sense of what it is. Let me, ah, okay, it's here. I'm going to show you. What do you see in my screen? You see this uh, diagram here? Can they uh, enlarge it? Thank you. Okay, it I'm going to make it large, but I want to show you. 
uh, it's getting a little bit loaded uh, okay this is not my uh, something i uh, took it from internet to show you okay uh, so i'm giving the copyright <laughs> giving the copyright and showing you okay so now these apayas naraka tirat animals uh, petas and asuras and the manusa loka and you see the six heavens here chatu maharajika tavati sayama tusta nimarati parameta vasati and all these are brahma worlds going uh, up right brahma parisaja purohita brahma paritaba and till akarnitta this is the highest deva world in buddhism actually it's a brahma world you know what even the sakka the highest deva in uh, what you call tavatinsa would like to expect so much to be reborn in akanita they are planned to be reborn in akanita because there is something pretty interesting in akanita in all the other heavenly worlds from the manusa world up until here and till here until sudassi uh there is a, an age problem let's say you were born 10 years before than me and you see the age problem we see the age problem here right right you can witness that everybody is differently old but in akanita nobody is old they all are young even you born today you are same young you born 10 years ago same young because because when you were when you are reborn in one of the five last uh, what you call brahma worlds abhiha atappa sudassa sudassi akarita you are definitely going to be uh, an arahant that means you cannot be reborn in one of these five brahma worlds unless you attain anagami in your in the manusa world if you attain anagami only you can be reborn in one of the uh, heavenly what you call last brahma worlds but akarita is pretty interesting because there's no Uh, age gap you know so the 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 thing that i reason i wanted to show you is uh, about this diagram is when you say antalike and bummai that means the deva that are living uh, in the earth and deva who are living in the sky right so how do we understand the deva who are living in the sky uh, what do you call uh, aerial deva celestial deva so deva who are uh, who are beyond yama deva from yama till akanita are the deva who are called here as antalike deva celestial or sky gods so other deva Uh, below yama that means tavatinsa chatu maharajika uh, they are called as uh, bumma deva means uh, what do you call terrestrial deva now there is a difference those who are doing lot of good karma to be born in one of the deva world they are not reborn as deva uh, you know on the ground those who are doing a lot of good karmas to be born as devas reborn as devas they are actually becoming devas uh, beyond yama yama to sita and uh, upward okay <clears throat> now you understand uh, how do we need to separate out uh, devas uh, on the ground and devas in the sky what's the criteria now uh-huh. now venerable ananda is sprinkling water by asking devas uh, now what devas he is addressing to his calling to terrestrial deva and sky deva so terrestrial deva means devas on the ground and uh, celestial devas are the ones we call antalike so how do we separate out these two devas uh, identify yama ah devas from above yama they are the sky deva devas from below yama are the terrestrial the ground devas so now venerable ananda is requesting the both kind of devas here okay whatever the beings that are here assemble whether terrestrial deva or sky deva 
sabbe sabbe bhuta sumana bhava wow, very pretty interesting huh? very nice uh, prayer sabbe what is sabbe all actually sabbe means all uh, eva means each one sabbe all bhuta bhuta means beings now even the devas brahmas they are also beings sumana bhavantu sumana what is sumana what is sumana some folks what is a mana mana is mind so means good mind uh, this is a female uh, a name that we give to sometimes to some uh, lady devotees huh? dama name sumana sumana means uh, become happy or have a peace of mind so may all the devas who have gathered here from the ground and from the sky be happy be peaceful uh, that's how venerable ananda is reciting and then athopi and also moreover sakkacha sakkacha means mindfully mindfully or i would say uh, properly basitam uh, sunantu listen to my words sunantu means listen basitam means my words any questions uh, bante so this is the stanza that they uh, very is in the beginning the ananda make a make a wish or command the uh, asking help from the devas to do the blessings for the place no, is this it is from this is not ananda a or? command this is something uh, uh, venerable Calling. ananda ananda is uh, actually this is not venerable ananda's own words this was the buddha's own words but okay uh, as the buddha told uh, venerable ananda he is going to recite it so okay. uh, so venerable ananda is saying that means the buddha's own words saying he is trying to make the background first you know like mm. let's say you go to a very terrible crowd you are not going to talk about hey i'm going to talk dhamma now <laughs> people are very surprised who is this guy huh? doesn't know who we are and what's going on here you going to you going to make the background prepare the background first right before you go somewhere right so he so what the buddha told venerable ananda was to prepare the background make sure that mm. that you are trying to make a connection to these uh, gods uh, mm. sky gods and uh, you know uh, the the ground uh, terrestrial gods uh, at the same time uh, try to make space for them right sort of mm. try to appreciate them may you be well and happy see even he told like that huh? and then please listen to my words please listen to these words huh? right so whenever you want to talk to people you're going to say please listen to my words i mean that's a kind of a proper way of starting off a, a good conversation rather than saying that hey you got to you know this is my dhamma you got to listen <laughs> trying to make a very friendly connection to the devas over there then starting off uh, the tiratana three triple gem while we understand the pali meaning we also need to understand how this event happened you know so uh, yeah any other question before we jump into second uh, stanza what is yama god bante i heard before it's, it's yama yama yeah, yeah yama uh, the, uh -huh. the god who uh, in charge for the uh, hell the god who are in charge of the hell beings uh Oh, that's Yama, not Yama. This is Yama actually. Is Yama is the god of the hell. He's the he's the king of uh, uh, the hells actually. Here he's here uh, the deva heaven called Yama. Yama is a higher heaven than uh, Chatu Maharajika. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's Yama, not this as long a, not Yama. So Yama means the king of the uh, hells. we can make a choice either to meet sakka or meet uh, yama it's always possible <laughs> do akusala or kusala so do akusala you can meet yama 
uh, and you do kusala you can meet sakka uh, and yama has uh, his own dogs they say uh, the black dogs in the hell that's what we see uh, in the canon so they are the ones who are trying to bring uh, bad guys uh, from different yeah. places uh, to the front of the yama interesting <laughs> Okay, if no, there are no questions, we can jump into the second uh, verse. Any other questions about the first answer, the background story? Now, if I ask you uh, the background story, I think you all have a say about the background story and at the same time, how this all happened. And the Lichavins, Vajji, uh, King Bimisara and all that, right? You all have a sort of understanding. Okay, verse number two. Uh, who is there to recite this stanza? Uh, Kim is pretty new to this sutta. Sita, you want to give a try to the second stanza, Pratana Sutta? Tasmahi Bhutta. Is me Bhante? Yeah. Yeah, oh, it's you. Sorry. It's you. <laughs> okay. Tasma hi buta nisa meta sabe metang karota manusia pajaya viva ta ratota haranti e baling tasma hine rakata apamata. Great. Tasma hi buta. Again, we find buta. See? The people who are living at the moment. So people who are already dead called Peta. Tasmahi Bhuta Nisa Metha Sabbi Metang Karotha Manusya Pajaya Divacha Rattocha Haranti Epaling Tasmahi Ne Rakhata Appamata. Dhamma folks, there is something very interesting while I am reading this. Now, you may say that. Uh, Whenever you uh, recite the stanzas in your own way, it's okay because you know the meaning. If you know the meaning, as as uh, for as your knowledge of the meaning, then it's be fine. But I think there is a problem with the Pali as well. If you don't pronounce the proper Pali, then the, the word doesn't come out uh, to be addressed to the people. Now, when I talk, when you talk to somebody, if the word is pro properly pronounced, they understand it differently. Right, so then that's why we have to understand the aspirates uh, where you see the uh, emphasis. Tasmahi, not but not buta, buta, bu, bu, there's H sound, buta. Then not nisame te, there is H sound, nisame te, sabi, metang karote, not karote. Th karotha manusya hajaya divacha ratoch haranti but there is no emphasis no aspirate tasmahi ne rakhtha there is h sound rakhtha appamatta so I encourage you to uh, pronounce Pali properly because then it's, because it's a language right we can pronounce our own way but we should be able to try out I mean Sita you are fine I mean I'm trying to give a Common advice to all of us, right? Let's get into the meaning. Listen here, all beings. Shower your loving kindness to those humans who day and night bring offerings to you. Therefore, guard them diligently. There are many other ways of translating this. Huh? Although I uh, got it from Nalanda, but don't worry. I mean, there are many other ways to translate this. Tasma. Tasma. Now, in Pali, we call Tasma to be therefore. Therefore, now, now folks, you get now there are beings gathered here, regardless of sky gods or terrestrial god. May you may uh, only be well and happy. Please listen to me. And then listen here, all beings. Tasmahi, therefore, Bhuta, beings, Nisameta Sabbi, Sabbi Bhuta, therefore, all beings, Nisameta. What does Nisameta mean? Nisameta means pay attention, give your attention, right? Give your attention. 
Uh, isn't this the way that we normally address a gathering? Let's say there is a gathering and uh, MC is coming up and then MC is first saying that, please uh, listen to me, right? Otherwise not just uh, keep saying that, uh, the, what do you call the house, uh, house what do you call the uh, housekeeping announcement, right? First, the MC is trying to get attention of the crowd, right? So the same way. Therefore, all beings, listen. Metta karota manusya paja. Manusya pajaya. Manusya means humans. Pajaya means what is pajaya? Pajaya means the whole community of humans here. Metta karota. Please spread loving kindness to them. Metta to them. Now see, it's pretty important. It's very important to understand the metta. Because metta is very important. Right? Now, what do you think here, Dhamma folks? Do you think that these devas are the problem here or the other evil spirits were the problem here? Now, how do we understand these evil spirits and the devas here? Do you think that the devas came here to, uh, you know, uh, uh, devour the, uh, the dead bodies or, or the evil spirits? How, how do we understand these two groups actually? Now, earlier we know there was a threefold calamities, famine, uh, evil spirits and then uh, what do you call disease right now here venerable ananda is actually shouting out to devas on the ground in the sky so how do we understand these two folks here interesting huh now do you think venerable ananda in the words of the buddha is shouting out to the evil spirits or the devas where are the evil spirits at the moment? They are still somewhere there, right? They are everywhere. But Ananda is trying to shout out to devas who have gathered here just because the Buddha arrived there to guard the Buddha, right? So, Venerable Ananda, uh, in the words of the Buddha, asking these devas, please spread metta to these humans. Now the question arises, why Ananda has to all, now Ananda or whoever here, uh, has to ask from the Deva, please come here and do it. That means Devas are not naturally protecting people. <laughs> Interesting. If Devas are always protecting people, why Ananda or the Buddha has to uh, ask, can you come please, you know, to this point and then do it. That means the propitiation, asking them to come is very important. Now, you know that those folks who are doing some uh, activities with the uh, bad evil spirits, they call them to come. Hey, hey, come over here, attack these people. They call in the bad evil spirits. In the same way, good folks, you have to, you have to let them come in. You know? Please come over here. Please help me. You know, This is the idea here. And asking them to spread metta. That means, that means uh, even these good devas are not always giving metta. Uh, we have to ask them, please come over here and then spread loving kindness to these folks. Right? If they were naturally uh, into that business, there is no need to ask them, come over here and then do it. Right? Who actually told this to Venerable Ananda? The Buddha said. In the words of the Buddha, right? And then? Interesting. Huh? Yeah, these are interesting. <laughs> we had to find the, the prop construction. The good right? ones are always there to help you. You still need to invite them and ask them to come and help. You have to invite them. Otherwise, mm. they won't come to you. Because it's a, it's a trespassing. Nobody wants to trespass your property, right? That's right. why we always have to... Pray for, you know, blessings. Yeah, invite to, them. Yeah. Right? Invite them. Otherwise, they think it's a trespass. Right? Mm. It's a trespass. Anyways, so now, Venerable Ananda is giving another uh, introduction to these devas, uh, saying, a reason why you should come and spread metta to these folks, humans. Divacha ratto cha haranti ye baling. Ah, these people, humans, they are always offering 
gifts to you day and night. Now I think most of you do your prayers uh, in your house, right? You do prayers in the morning, you do prayers at night, you do prayers uh, every Monday, I mean, before you become a Buddhist, right? You do your own, uh, whatever you are, uh, you know, your cultural things, right? Your prayer stuff, right? So, whenever Ananda is showing them that, uh, you know, uh, trying to convince them that these folks are not, not normal folks, they are always offering gift to you, food and other oblations, right? Tasma, again, therefore, he nay, nay means those folks, humans, rakata appamatta. Appamatta means diligently. Rakata means guard them. Please come fast or please do it uh, on time. Please take care of these beings on time. Right? Now, what is baling? I wanted to actually explain what is baling here. Now, baling here means something pretty interesting. Uh, if I could find out uh, something I can send you, let me see. Yeah, okay, I found it out here. Okay, five kinds of Bali here. Now in Buddhism, uh, especially in this sutta, is where we can see that. Pattakamma Sutta in Anguttara Nikaya. Okay. Pattakamma Sutta is appeared uh, in, let me give you the, the correct place. Yeah, I put okay. the other way in my breast of the seat or dot. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 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 Pattakama Sutta means Anguttara Nikaya 461. Six, huh? I'll give you the right uh, reference to. So in this Sutta, it is, it is uh, mentioned about the Bali. There are five balis. You can see five kinds of bali. The first bali is uh, sorry about the first uh, uh, pali term. It should be uh, bali to uh, kings folk. We call it nyati bali. It should be nyati bali. Yeah, nyati. Nyati means uh, to the kings folk. Uh, let me say uh, that means you you. Uh, you serve your relatives, right? Uh, on different occasions, you prepare food, right? You do things to them, right? Your friends and uh, relatives, especially here, uh, relatives. And the second Bali is Atiti Bali. That means whenever a guest comes over to your house, you prepare food and you give tea and all that. Atiti Bali, second Bali. The third Bali is Pubba Peta Bali. That means your dana to the monks, dana to other monastics. That means a pubba peta bali. The fourth bali is the bali to the king. Who is, what is that bali? Uh, try to have a guess about it. What's the bali? Now these balis were the balis the Buddha asked us to do. Huh? We have to do it. We're supposed to do these five balis. Now what's the bali for the king? Anybody wants to guess that? What's the Bali for the king? Royalty. Ah, interesting aspect, but it's not royalty here. Paying tax. Ah, paying tax. <laughs> you found it, right? So that means even the Buddha asks us to pay the tax. I mean, I mean, it doesn't mean that those bad guys who are try to evade from the taxes, you know. Some countries uh, ask to pay a lot of tax, but if it is a tax that is according to our income, it's fine because, you know, if the government has a proper plan to share the, uh, what do you call, the money, it's, it's good. So the Buddha said that we need to pay tax. If there is a, a person who is trying to evade tax, he is not a Buddhist guy. <laughs> we have to pay tax, right? But but because of the corrupted governments, we have a very uh, distorted idea about uh, paying tax. But anyways, so we are supposed to pay tax. Okay, That is called Raja Bali. That's the fourth Bali. The, the last Bali is Devata Bali. That means, what is it? 
offerings to the god are uh, that's the bali which is mentioned here in the ratna sutta you see look at it diva cha ratto cha haranti e bali ah the day and night diva means day ratti ratto means uh, night right these folks these people offer the uh, what do you call devata bali, bali every day these folks in the vesali city tasma dyafo you should protect them diligently appamata you should protect them diligently okay so um let me see if i miss out on any interesting part here mm. yeah so these are the five balis so so on the other hand it is said that it is a duty and a responsibility of the gods to protect the people when they are encountering these uh, unforeseen uh, problems in their life but uh, unfortunately devas are are to be called out for these things they are not naturally automatically coming up and <laughs> helping us right it's pretty interesting so they so you have to call them hey please come over here and it's the same thing uh, like uh, you in white monks hello bante please come over to my house not that monks coming and knock the door hey hello sister open the door we're going to do a blessing for you <laughs> it's not happening right it's kind of a trespass you had to invite them to come over to your house the same way the devas you had to invite them the bad guys do the same thing who do to uh, do the demonic practices they invite in the bad evil forces to come uh, over to somebody's place so it's always uh, invitation by invitation <laughs> appointments on <only>, invitations <laughs> bante uh, by transferring merits is it considered as also as, as a bali pubba peta bali yeah it's a bali so we are supposed to do these five balis as much as we can how about sharing merits to the deva and devi this one pubba peta bali uh, sorry uh, uh, devata bali devata devata bali that one is pubba peta bali okay. pretty interesting to see the taxing you know i mean paying tax is also part of bali and taking care of your guests taking care of your relatives they all are balis why why did the buddha mention these five balis uh, in this way uh, th- one of the reasons for that is at that time people thought bali means to do sacrifices killing lot of animals and then offering to the uh, god so buddha did not approve such kind of stuff he said we need to practice five balis depending on the you are a monastic or a uh, lay person so now still we haven't come to the sutta now still the background thing what happened now at the beginning of the third stanza once venerable ananda started residing yang kinchi vittang idava hurangwa all the evil spirits uh, are said to have left the ground left the city of vesali this is what we understand by the commentary that means uh, remembering appreciating the buddha his teachings and sangha are the, the most important aspects in someone's life Okay any questions for today about this the background and the sutta or the first two stanzas if not we're going to uh, transfer the merits and then we will uh, pick out the uh, uh, stanza number 3 uh, from the next week so actually i'm trying to look at uh, the contextual i would say uh, some of the very unseen undiscussed ideas about the stanzas here when i discuss with you because you normally listen to this chant you probably you normally recite it now let's go for individual words when we study uh, from next week as we did today and see what is really inside here in each stanza so whenever you listen to a chanting of ratana sutta even during vas are you understand oh this a meet i mean listen and then bali means five valleys and you get to understand what they are 
you never had this before you just okay this is a protection uh, protection just protection <laughs> protection so i i be protected at the end. i be protected now i am safe huh? right i am bulletproof <laughs> i am safe i am safeguarded it's not not only that way you get to understand each time the monk is residing none is residing and you get to know these words let's say yani the bhutanya these are the living beings samagatani means assemble here bhumani means the ground antalike means sky from beyond yama uh, from below uh, yama is bhumani right have you ever uh, thought such things uh, to this point i don't think so so this is why uh, we trying to uh, you know uh, discuss these important aspects okay any question uh, from books auntie can i ask uh, sometime we chant deva naga mahidika the naga where is it where is the ranking deva <laughs> naga mahidika okay naga is a group of deva actually we call oh. it um, i would say one of the chatur maharaj kris devas so if i call it uh, four we call them loka palakas four guardian deva type it uh, i would say naga is one of the four guardian devas i wanted to uh, particularly tell you who they are mm. now uh, let me see that give you the right answer okay so nagas are under the virupakka now there are four gods under the uh, chatur maharajika heaven the first heaven chatur maharajika yama tavatinsa sita nimman rati parameti wasma so in the first world this is the world that the heaven that is always protecting this whole universe the human world in the human world so in that particular heaven there are four gods vesavana virulhaka tatarata virupaka now nagas are uh, the disciples of virupaka so nagas are kind of devas okay so uh, but the thing is now when you see that particular pali stands up for the gods um what do you call aka satta dibummatta deva naga mahidiga now nagas are not different from deva nagas are part of deva okay they are part of deva but they have been taken out separated from there to to lay emphasis on their duty it is said that nagas are living uh, uh the different there are different nagas they are mostly living uh, uh you know in uh, watery places uh, waterfalls lakes yeah oh. there are nagas lot of nagas protecting yeah okay yeah mahidika means to say i would say these are synonyms to my understanding dhamma folks don't take it from uh, three aspects the aka sakta a the devas on the ground akasatta yeah devas devas in the sky akasatta bummatta devas on the ground devanaga mahidika so these beings who are called by deva same naga mahidika mm-hmm. they all are to taken as a whole okay thanks thank you bante bante yes yeah. no but you i didn't get it huh? is it this um, devas uh, because the human being uh, practicing the five bali they make the offering to the devas and all the ground and heavenly beings to protect them but when this pestilence happened in baisali uh, why didn't the, um, why didn't the, the devas protect the people there why did they allow the the suffering to huh? they, they were not called upon now they were not called upon why do they need that's, to be called upon that's why Because i said they, they uh, yeah the the general uh, idea is is a misconception you think that the devas come automatically they have other business because, too huh? so these because, human beings are doing it every day huh? people are doing it every day frequently so the devas are 
receiving it. So the human being are doing their duty, but nobody calls a human being. You must practice the five dali, five dali. So the human being are doing it. So the the the, the uh, this part is not clear. Why 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 the deva devas need to be called upon? Huh? Yeah, very sort interesting. Of, uh, like, yeah, actually, uh, I think I'm not unfair. Yeah, unfair to one. Yeah. Okay. Let me let me uh, uh, let me actually uh, give you uh, you know the answer for this. Now, here's the thing: devas are not always moral. They are they are they are playing a lot. They are with lots of karma. You know, some devas are actually dying because they have anger, jealousy uh, between each other. Actually, this happens when somebody has lots of comforts. Especially uh, in those deva realms, and it is said that when devas come to listen to the Buddha's dharma talks, when the Buddha talks about anicca, impermanence, they get fainted. They fainted actually. Yeah. Then, then again, they get back to normal, and then again, Buddha talks about impermanence. Again, get fainted because they never think that their comforts will go to an yeah. end. Right, so they always think my comforts are going to be like this Whatever. for long, right? That means they are with lots of comforts. When you are with lots of comforts, uh, you it is unlike it is very likely that you have a big liking towards karma, right? But the thing is, because devas have more power than a human, uh, I mean, in terms of uh, protection and then comfort and then uh, accessibility to the stuff. Uh, they are not always. They are busy guys with you know busy. is all about that. Busy people with comforts. <laughs> I would say so. That's why. That's why. In the at the same time, not all the devas are good devas. Huh? Keep that in mind. They are not good devas. In the Atanati Sutta, Yakka, Yakka also a deva. Uh, they are part of the disciples of the Vesavana here. One of the. Uh, so some of the Yakkas are bad deva. They are bad deva. They don't like other people donate. They don't like others because because now the now the thing is there are good devas too, wholesome moral devas too. So uh, I mean there are instances where devas are trying to help out somebody, right? But in all those circumstances, the person expected they come and help them uh, in case of any emergency. Right for this community issue. Now this was a community issue, right? Because the evil spirits are there. They have no food, no water. This was a community issue. So at that point, they were uh, needed to specifically called upon uh, to come and uh, help them. So that's what we had to understand. Uh, so if you, because if you, I think this idea comes from a perception that all the devas are good people, good guys. It is not. Now we have to understand. Then how come the good devas uh, look at somebody? I mean, help somebody. There are occasions such devas automatically, naturally uh, approach such beings. But there are other events where devas, without devas, uh, you know, uh, called upon, they did not, uh, you know, uh, turn out to uh, those places. Now here, that's why one of the bali is to. Now it is said that these people have been doing their duties to the devas, but they did not turn up, right? Now this can happen even in the human world, right? You are paying your taxes, but things are not coming to you. You are not comfortable. <laughs> the, the, the the governments are not not taking care of you very well. Sometimes you are uh, doing other things. It doesn't come out the way that you want. So there are some. Uh, you know those, uh, you know uh, unfair stuff that can happen. But anyways, we are supposed to pay respect or whatever uh, offer the things to deva. Now in this case, now for Buddhists, what we are doing is we are not offering things to them. We are sharing good karmas with them. 
that's our bali here actually one day one day yeah one day may i ask what is the condition of the human to be reborn as a back devas i always thought devas are good good devas but today uh, i think this sharing is good but uh, i like to know what conditions that make them to born in a deva realm that is really higher than human realm but uh, but a bad one why how come have you seen the people who are doing good things and also doing the bad things they are doing okay. dana they are doing dana they are helping others but they are gossiping they are also doing some bad things too at the same time right there are such then, things uh, in this world so they are doing they are, mix mix karma mix oh, karma so, right so not they are born in a mix huh? so they are born in a mix realm <laughs> no 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 i mean i in mean deva deva no, deva worlds are comfortable places than human But, but because uh-huh. that particular being has been doing a lot of good karma, he or she is able to reborn as a deva. But the problem yeah. is that they that particular being has also been uh, doing bad karmas too. So their mind is not settled. Their mind does not go to dhamma. So they are doing bad stuff. Now, have you yeah. seen a similar? Uh-huh. Have you seen a similar example? Those rich folks sometimes. who have given lots of uh, dana in their previous lives but in this life they are sometimes not behaving uh, in a good way they might be harassing other people right it can happen so it's it's kind of a, a reason uh, that can happen due to a, a mixed karma yeah bande i have a question here from the uh, facebook okay Uh, you say is it naga loka underwater deep inside area in the sea <laughs> <laughs> i am not sure where it exa- where it exactly uh, you know is located but uh, it is said that to all the watery places lakes oceans uh, rivers mm-hmm. ponds there are yeah. nagas uh, that have attraction to it so i can exactly uh, single out that this is the place where the nagas are. but there are actually there are water nagas and uh, terrestrial nagas too but pretty much here we take it as the water nagas even now, naga uh, also there is a bad, bad and good nagas right something yeah there are now have you heard about some uh, information about uh, when somebody goes to a waterfall now this waterfall takes uh, victims every year right uh these probably some of the wishes of nagas when somebody goes to a lake or a waterfall sometimes they feel i want to go a little closer little closer their minds are getting taken away by these nagas they can't stop saying that hey i got to stop here i should not probably swim over there i should not go a little closer uh, i mean their minds are getting carried out by nagas actually now come over come over here just enjoy the water but then there is no control over the water and he or she is actually carried away by the nagas wishes so there are bad nagas too mm. because because you have a control before you jump into the water but when you are in the water you have you lose your control because you are not strong your mind is not strong so then nagas attack you some bad nagas mm. Okay any other questions Bhante there are many suttas that the buddha has shared for protection and all that i'm just wondering why has ratna sutta become one of the most common and sutta that I mean, the community of monks are chanting uh, for protection. Is out there of, an, yeah, any there special is a, reason? There is a special reason out of all the parittas, as uh, Brutus uh, pointed out at the beginning. Out of all the paritta, so-called paritta suttas, Ratna to Ratna sutta takes precedence. The reason uh, being is that uh, Ratna sutta was addressed to a community issue. not just for a one person 
because this whole community in the city of Vesali was plagued by the threefold calamities famine, uh, evil spirits, and then the uh, plague. So, there is a big reason for uh, monks, nuns to talk about this and then to, uh, you know. Uh, share this uh, as, a, as a chanting and at this point as a sutta discussion. So there are multiple reasons. I mean, this is the main reason because it was addressed towards a kind of a community issue. Now, it, if it was addressed towards one person, it could have been kind of a less, less popular common uh, sutta as paritta. Now, this is why Ratana Sutta was such popular because uh, it was addressed for a, a bigger community issue. And uh, and also the contents of the sutta is very interesting. Uh, as we as we actually study from next week, you will see uh, it has actually talked about the triple gem in their entirety. Now, lo lots of people don't understand this. If you look at the contents of these uh, rest of the fifteen, uh, uh, let's let's leave out, leave out the last three stanzas. So we have then uh, I would say uh, there are fifteen more. And 12 stanzas. If you see these 12 stanzas about Buddha, Dhamma, Saya, you see that there is no other place where you see Buddha, Dhamma, Sangha have been interpreted so precisely, so interestingly. So that's another very interesting reason, other than uh, this was actually addressed for a communication. Okay. Thank you, Bhante. And, and you won't see that there is a paritta other than Ratana Sutta, which was addressed for, for evil spirits. Now, these evil spirits actually, uh, we don't see that many suttas in canon, right? Uh, yeah, because I have personally encountered, uh, while I was in Canada, a house where they were saying that uh, um, it was a Christian uh, house saying that uh, there was a disabled daughter and the mom was saying that I was actually, I was the only one who went there uh, because I was invited uh, through a personal connection. That another apartment in the same building, uh, another block of the apartment was, was incanting kind of a prayer towards one very big uh, evil person, evil God. They were trying to send some prayers to this house. So, Evil spirits are such uh, a common issue in some cultures, in most of the cultures. So this is the best sutta for evil spirits because Buddha never said, hey, go away from here. No, he was kindly asking, please listen to my words. And also asking other gods, they was, please listen to our words and then please protect them in a very nice way. Now, those folks who are handling the evil spirits, they are trying to chase them away, right? But in here, evil spirits are actually, uh, I would say, chased, not chased away in that way. They are kindly asked, right? They are not chased away by force. Uh, Buddha prepares the background through Venerable Ananda and then asking them to leave uh, in a very kind way. That's another interesting thing uh, which we need to answer about Ratana Sutta. So, one thing, uh, sorry, yeah, I don't know whether I'm taking it out of context or not. Uh, the thing is that can we uh, consider the recent pandemic that the entire nation and world was uh, with COVID 19? Is it something similar to what Visali, the city of Visali, was going through? Is that something it's that we can connect it, that? It's there is no threefold calamities, but I know there is a food shortage uh, in some places where people started panic buying. But here we see the third uh, calamity, what you call uh, a pestilence, I would say this uh, pandemic. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, it can happen because, uh, uh, because uh, it's not, we, we cannot say it happened because of the evil spirits here. It happened because of the carelessness, probably uh, this cutting edge development of the science or probably the people, probably people needed a, a good break out of the activities, right? There may be multiple reasons for that, but uh, we, cannot, we cannot directly uh, connect uh, 
Pratana Sutta to this thing. But, uh, you know, the monks and nuns, they started chanting Pratana Sutta, right? Definitely. Yeah, because I, I, I realized that there were many families or members who were affected by this illness. And when this Ratana Sutta was actually uh, given to them or they chanted, many felt very comfortable, very peaceful yeah. and very calm. So I feel that there is some connection to, you know, or yes, is it the, the faith the main, that they the main, have? Uh, how, how do you, is it the faith that they feel that Ratana Sutta can protect them or is it really true Ratana Sutta? <laughs> No we, no, we cannot single out how they were, uh, uh, how they felt comfortable, right? Uh, if, if we say it is because of Ratana Sutta, it might not be, to say. But, but as strong believers of Ratana Sutta, we can say like that. But nobody knows what really went uh, good with them. But anyways, we have, a, as Buddhists, we have a strong belief about Ratana Sutta. Plus, Ratana Sutta is very similar to what happened uh, with uh, COVID-19. So people thought that this is this has a connection to COVID-19, right? Yeah. So there's no problem to think like that, right? Uh, but although you listen to the chanting, it didn't, it, it didn't, it does not mean that we solely need to depend on Ratana Sutta. We had to practice a uh, lot of things, right? Our individual responsibilities. That's uh, how it you know worked. Now I know one famous monk in Sri Lanka. <laughs> He went uh, on a helicopter and it sprinkled food <laughs> everywhere in Sri Lanka, uh, right? So I mean, spending a lot of money, but you know, uh, but you know, we had to take it differently from this ancient perspective as well as our modern uh, this geopolitical background too, as a responsibility. Thank you, Bhante. Bhante, may I ask, you know, and when a person, uh, it happened to be in a place very, very uh, like disturbance and uh, turbulence time, it would be good, it would be the sadat of the triple jam, it would be good to have, uh, to know how to chant this Ratana Sutta, is it? It's a tool, anywhere you go, anytime you can just chant or, or what? If you happen okay. to be in that place, what do you do as a, you know, for a well, okay? What do you, what do you think about this instance? Somebody is traveling, uh, he is uh, on board in a flight. Uh, yeah. Now uh, he or she gets to know the uh, flight is having an issue uh, in air, in the air, right? Do you think that person has more time to think about vipassana or uh, mindfulness or whatever? No, mm. that person will immediately think about the family and the loved ones. And something's very quick, very short. This is why we need these prayers, actually. You know, these, these suttas. I mean, a lot of people in Sri Lanka, when something happens, when they are scared, they say, It is actually bus words. So I think people should have such things too. They don't have a lot of time to think about a lot of Dhamma. That's why when you listen to Dhamma a uh, long time, you should be able to have a have a sort of a synopsis, have an essence of that dumb because you can't, you won't have time to think about all these dumb things at that point because your mind is very weak, you are afraid, you are scared, right? But my understanding is uh, chanting or oh, uh, remembering to chant Ratana a couple of sectors at least Yankin Sri is very good as a shortcut. As a very short piece uh, to feel happy, feel comfortable, and when you are scared, feel manipulated, uncomfortable. Mm, thank you, As you see in Mahayana, you see Amitabha. Right? Amitabha. I mean, they have their. Amitabha. Yeah, I mean, yeah. They, they feel it. They don't think about these Mahayanic big you know, uh, no, no. concepts. They always think Amitabha. Amitabha. I mean, yeah. the more they chant, they feel like, okay, I have the protection from the Buddha. So I think there should be a short way and a long way. Short way is this, long way is if you uh, can understand Dhamma and then if you can make up your mind. So the thing is, if you are somebody who practice Dhamma very well, in such kind of a, an emergency, your mind becomes very strong. You know, I die, uh, right? I die, I'm going to die. 
but I have to settle my mind. But if you are somebody who hasn't listened Dhamma so much, then you have fear, then you have at least something to think about. What if you die with lots of fear? I have nobody, I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die in the ocean, I'm gonna then you're gonna be reborn in a hell because you have lots of fear. You don't know what to focus on at that point. But so there are so many options. Uh, can we chant uh, Ratana Sutta to uh, like dying uh, relatives or family members during the uh, dying dying relatives or family members? Can we chant Ratana Sutta? Yeah, we, we just can before chant. They die, we, no, we can just chant. Before they die. Yeah, before they die. Yeah, we can chant. We can chant definitely. So when someone is going to die, the first thing that we have to think is we should not scare that person, try to try to cry. Because the moment you start crying, that person thinks he is going to lose something, right? He's going to lose, he's going to separate from you, and then he's getting scared because I'm not going to be with him anymore. Where am I going to go now? I don't know what I want to do. Is it like a blackout state? You know? Don't give that pressure, because that, that fear to that person. Try to hold your tears. Try to hold it. You're gonna die. You're gonna cry definitely. But let him die peacefully. You know, but die peacefully. That's that's uh, something you un should understand at the moment. I mean, at that point. Okay. So let's uh, then uh, wind this up for today. So many things uh, to discuss. I think we discussed the background story and then some of the very important facets of the first two stanza. So let's share, uh, transfer, share all the good karmas with the departed relatives and the uh, devas at this point. May all the good karmas be transferred to all the departed relatives. What's the name for them? Peters. Peters, not Buddhas. Huh? May all the good karmas be transferred to all the Peters, departed beings who passed away in the name of all of us. If they were reborn in a bad state of life in one of the Yamas places, Narakas, Tirachanas, and other places, as well as may they be able to get these good karmas and then to be reborn in a better place. If they are already in a better place, may they be able to uh, practice or uh, listen to Dhamma and then finally attain the supreme bliss of Nibbana. Sadhu. Sadhu, sadhu. Idam me yati langho tu sukita hum tu yatayo. Idam me yati langho tu sukita hum tu yatayo. May all the good karmas be, be shared by all the devas. Now, this includes Nagas and all the Mahikikas, which means. Devas, Nagas are part of Devas, and all the Devas are uh, magnification. They are powerful. So, Mahidikas mean uh, that meaning. So, may all the Devas protect all of you, all the devotees, all participated here today, and also the monks, reverends, uh, all these uh, monastics. Uh, may the Devas uh, protect you for good health, quality of life, and all the blessings, prosperity in your life, and for safety. May the devas also uh, be well and happy and finally attain the supreme bliss of Nepal. Sadhu, 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 sadhu. Now here there is something that I want to connect. Now normally people uh, implore us the devas come and help, but we here give them merits which will make them happier than that. Sabi diva anudan tu sabi san patisya itta vataj amini sambhatan tu sambhada sabi bhuta anudan tu sabi san patisya itta vataj amini sambhatan tu sambhada sabi satta anudan tu sabi san patisya Aka Sata Mata Divana Kramaka Punyantan Anuditwa Chiran Rakan Prasasana Aka Sata Mata Divana Gamaka 
Punyakan anamu ditwa ciram rakti sa akasatha cibum mantha diva rada mahitika punyakan anamu ditwa ciram rakti mantha sa by the power of the Buddha Dhamma Sangha Tiratana uh, may you all be well and happy uh, may all the sufferings go away. May all the fears go away. May all the uh, sicknesses go away. May you always be safe and protected by the Buddha, Dhamma, Sangha and all the other devas. So let's make our great wish as we normally do after every event. May all the good karmas that we've been accumulating to this extent be supportive and helpful for all of us to attain the supreme bliss of Nibbana. Sadhu, 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 I will bless you with a couple more stanzas. Please receive the blessings. Abhivadana silisa nichang vadha pachayinu Chattaru dhamma vadhanti Ayuvannu sukhang balang Ayura rubya sampatti sagga sampatti nevach Atu nibbana sampatti Iminati Samidin Chatu Sadhu 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 So uh, Thank you Bhante Thank have you Have a good night and take care Until Thank we see you next Friday yeah, you with the too, Take care Good night everyone Good night Good night Good night Good night See you all next week Sadhu Thank you Thank you